can change these statistics. Pastor Tommy, this is a brother from the high desert, spoke in his church up there, and uh, got a heart for God, and this pastor went out into the streets and handed out gospel tracts with me and took a remnant with him, and I says, you know what, the next seminar I do, I want you to come and preach a little bit, because you you leading by example, and you have a right to stand before people up here. Amen. First of all, I just want to thank God for my salvation. I thank God that I'm saved and washed through the blood of the Lamb. I, I'm just so, I'm so grateful for what Jesus has done. I know He's real. I know He is. You know, I asked God. I said, Lord, when I come up here, fill my mouth. Just fill my mouth. And the Lord gave me the scripture to read out of out of Romans chapter ten, verse number thirteen. It says, "For whosoever shall call." Upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. But they have... Not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who has believed your, our report? So that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And I, I, I wanted to share that with you really quick. I know I've got a few minutes, but just to let you know what God has done in my life. I used to play in nightclubs for a living. I was raised up playing music, you know, came out of an abusive, abusive home. My, 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 my mother and my father were, you know, just they didn't get along. I still want to go into that. But, you know, in any way... It started to shape and to form who I was. You know what I mean? And so, as I began to, 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 to uh, grow up, I began to just to draw into music. You know, we began to play in nightclubs. And so, at, a, at an early day, early age, we started to travel from state to state playing in nightclubs. And I'm the type of guy that, you know what I mean, if you're telling me, you know what I mean, you know, when I, when I got, you know, was struck out of drugs, you need to come and tell me to smoke a, a joint. I'll say, you know what, bro, we're going to get high to smoke a lid. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You want to go drink? You want to just go get a six pack? Forget the six pack. Let's go get a cake. You know what I'm saying? So when my brother came up to me and says, you know what? Why don't, why don't we start, you know, to, to try to get into playing for the nightclub? I said, well, we're going to play in the nightclub. Why don't we just quit our jobs and practice eight hours a day so that we can get good enough to go play in the nightclub? So I'm saying all that to say this and stuff. When I, when I would do something, I'd do with everything that I had. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm the type of guy, it's all, it's all or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So when I came to Jesus Christ, it was all or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I gave my life to, to go smoke that go and do all that mess. You know what I mean? So when I come to Jesus Christ, yeah. Jesus said, is this all you're going to give me? You were like a monkey for the devil. Why don't you give, give me everything that you got? And so I told the Lord, I said, God, you know what I'm saying? I was messed up from the floor up, man. I couldn't even get out of the bed. I ended up getting my, my girlfriend pregnant at the time back in, in 78. Amen? So I, I had a bottle of cocaine. I got strung out of cocaine. We were playing in a nightclub back in Fairbanks, Alaska for three months straight. The very first night that I was there, there was a, there was a girl that came up, and I'm up on the stage. I would play the drums, and then I would front, and I would sing. So the congano player would, would, would get on the drums, and I'd get the microphone. So the very first hour that we're there, this girl comes up, she's, and she's doing this to me. So I bend down, I go, can I help you? There's about 800 people at the nightclub. And she says, you want to get high? I said, yeah, yeah, what do you got? She pulls out some cocaine. She starts packing my nose on stage. So I get down. I said, well, i got to meet this girl because I was all on the drums. I said, what's your name? She goes, my name is so-and-so. Come to find out she was running for the, for the mob up in, up in Fairbanks, Alaska. Back in, back in the 70s, the pipeline was going on. There was prostitution. There was all kinds of stuff going on. So I, every, 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 we played six hours a night, six nights a week for three months straight. Every, every time I got on stage, she packed my nose. Every time I get down, we go out and do a gram of coke. I get back up, pack my nose. Get down, you know what I mean? On my day off, I got a guy coming, throws me a four-figure lid of cocaine. He says, here, you want to get high? Three months later, beloved, I was strung out. Couldn't get out the bed. Now I'm married. I ended up marrying my wife, Monica. And I, I remember having a vial of cocaine. I couldn't even get out the bed, man. I couldn't, I couldn't, I had to get the, I, and I got this vivid picture in my mindset of what, what Jesus Christ has delivered me from. Every time the enemy tries to come in, like a fat rat to say, you know what, why don't you give up? Like God says, don't forget what I've done for you. I set you free. I'm telling you what, I got fire shot in my bones. I'm telling you right now, 
1979, about 8.30 on the corner of 5th and B in Victorville, California, with a monkey on my back, went into a little church, and the, and the pastor says, you want to accept Jesus Christ? Come on up here. And I go walking up to the altar, got on my knees. And I said, man, Jesus, if you're so for real, like these crazy people say you are, then take this monkey off my back. Listen, beloved, I was having demonic dreams, man. I was demonically influenced by devils, man. Waking up in the middle of the night, kicking my wife out of the bed, man. Tormenting her life, when she was pregnant with my daughter. Hearing voices like, suck her in the stomach. I almost killed my little baby. So what 